Let me tell you a quick story about this guy here, Stephen Hawking. He's one of the most genius scientists of modern times. He understood how the universe works better than almost anyone before or since. Just an absolute genius. And a quirk of Hawking, of course, was that he had a motor neuron disease that left him paralyzed without use of almost his entire body. Now, he wasn't born like this. For most of his young life, Hawking was a healthy, able-bodied man. He was actually an athlete in college. He lost control over his body when he was about 21 years old. Now, a few years ago, the New York Times did an interview with Hawking. And during the interview, he talked about how happy he was, how excited he was about science and how fun his field was. And the New York Times asked him, are you always this happy? And Stephen Hawking responded, my expectations were reduced to zero when I was 21. Everything else since then has been a bonus. Not long after the Times interviewed Stephen Hawking, they interviewed a guy named Gary Kremen, who founded Match.com. Now, at the time, Kremen was 43 years old, and he was worth $10 million. That put him in the top half of 1% of wealth in the country, probably the top thousands of 1% of wealth in the world. But in Silicon Valley, it made him just another guy. He said, quote, you're nobody around here with $10 million. All of this highlights something that's really important with money, which is that all happiness is rooted in expectations. Let me show you how this applies to money and how you can hopefully gain a better sense of having enough. Here in America, if you ask Americans, what was the best period in American history? What was the best time economically that this country's ever had? Overwhelmingly, Americans point to one decade, the 1950s. The 1950s were, as we remember, it was like the golden age of middle-class prosperity, when anyone who worked hard could get a great job with great benefits and a life of a prosperous middle-class life. And we're not just saying this in hindsight, we knew it at the time. Life Magazine here wrote in 1955, they said, quote, the present and immediate future seems astonishingly good. The country has just lived through what was economically the greatest year in its history. But here's so, what's so interesting about this idea, the idea that the 1950s were so prosperous and wonderful. So by any metric, any way you spin it, we are wealthier and more prosperous today than we were back then. By a lot, too. The average income in 1955 in the United States was about $29,000. That's adjusted for inflation. By 1965, it was about $42,000. And today, in 2021, it's about $64,000. So the average American is more than twice as rich today than they were in the 1950s. The glorious period that we have so much nostalgia for. Why is that? Why do we yearn economically? for an era in which we were so much poorer? And I think the answer is actually pretty easy. It's that our expectations were lower in the 1950s than they are today. The 1950s were a really unique period in American history because the gap between rich and poor wasn't very high. You didn't have CEOs who made a thousand times more than their workers. There weren't athletes making $20 million per year. There weren't hedge fund managers making billions of dollars. That just didn't happen back in the 1950s. It was an era of pretty uniform growth across the economic classes. And so it was an era when your aspirations, your expectations that are being driven by everyone else around you didn't grow very fast. So earning a lower income today felt fine because everyone else was earning that much money. Living in a smaller house than we have today felt okay because everyone else lived in a small house. Going camping was an acceptable vac vacation because everyone else did it. Now that changed in the last 40 years as income inequality caused a small number of very rich people to kind of inflate everyone else's expectations. And this isn't a rally against income inequality. I want everyone to be rich, but it highlights something that is so important when dealing with money and creating the right money mindset, which is that if your expectations grow faster than your income, you will never be happy with money. We say that again. If your expectations grow faster than your income, you will never be happy with money. And if you're lucky enough to have a rising income or rising net worth and your expectations rise by even more, you're never going to be happy. 
Being happy with your money is just income minus expectations. It's a two-part equation. And so much focus in the financial world is just on the income side of the equation. We spend so much time trying to grow our incomes and grow our net worth. And that's great, we should. But we have to spend an equal amount of time thinking about keeping our expectations in check. Going out of our way to make sure that our expectations at least rise slower than our income grows. You will never be happy with your money unless you have some idea of what enough money is. And that word, enough, might be the most important word to think about when dealing with money. Now, I want to be an ambitious person. I want my net worth to grow. I want to earn more money. Of course, you probably do too, and that's great. But let me end with a story here about how powerful this can be and how amazing it can be when you keep your expectations for more money in check. Several years ago, two writers, Kurt Vonnegut and Joseph Heller, very famous writers, were at a dinner party at a house in the Hamptons with a very wealthy hedge fund manager. And Kurt Vonnegut turned to Joseph Heller and he said, do you know, Joseph Heller, that the hedge fund manager who owns this house makes more money per year than you have made in your entire lifetime? And Joseph Heller said, that might be true, but I have something that the hedge fund manager will never have, and that is enough money. Something for all of us to keep in mind.